Years ago, my husband and I were both in seminary together at a Benedictine monastery in rural Minnesota. Yeah. As part of a larger university, the seminary had its own small building where we lived, worked, studied, and prayed together. And it was named Emmaus Hall. Even though it was a building, it was really a road and a holding place for all the learning, the joys, the failures, and the feelings, and trust me, there were lots of those, <laughs> all those things that we experienced as we moved toward where we hoped God was calling each of us at that particular time. It was a place where we struggled and worshiped and accompanied one another as community on the journey. And some of us indeed went away sad and confused. In the concept of Emmaus, we are given to destinations and dwelling places and how to practice being an Easter people. Emmaus reminds us that our journeys are never linear. And certainly we see this in the story as the road to Emmaus becomes a roundabout way for the disciples to get back where they started, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, with the memory of Jesus' crucifixion. Jerusalem, with the empty tomb, yet also with the community of witnesses to the resurrection. As the story begins, two distraught disciples are found traveling back home, back to life within the grip of the Roman Empire. They could not yet comprehend the empty tomb. They were still dwelling in the, experiences, the experience of Jesus' traumatic death, so much so that they had given up and they were returning to what they knew, walking away sad, disappointed, and confused. Now, it's understandable that the empty tomb didn't make sense to those disciples. Their concept of who Jesus was, their hopes for the restoration of Israel, which they later revealed, were too small and, in fact, too hollow for Jesus. That hope limited their ability to believe because it was hope based on human understanding, on the empire's understanding, right? And yet I tell you, I feel like I am right there with them some days. Because although it is week three of the Easter season, it does not feel to me like Easter is happening in our world. This past week alone, death seems to literally and figuratively have dominion over our nation and our world. It also seems to have dominion in parts of our lives in all the ways that we cannot control tragedy and pain, grief and suffering within ourselves or those whom we love. As theologian S.M. Pater brilliantly states, Easter does not always come in three days. Stones are rolled away, but sometimes we stay in the tomb. Maybe as we hear the story today, we find ourselves on the road as the unnamed disciple, dwelling in an all too familiar despair, walking back toward what we know, to the empires that we inhabit, trying to make sense of where on earth God is in all this disappointment and violence and loss and this empty tomb. The Emmaus story reminds us that God doesn't want us to dwell in that space only, and in fact is inviting us to dwell in the transformative power of Easter again and again. And so in the midst of their journey away from Jerusalem, Jesus comes near to the disciples. Jesus meets them exactly where they're at, in the depths of their disbelief and despair. And even though they do not recognize Jesus at all, 
He encourages the, to, them to tell their story. He walks alongside them in their grief and then offers them an antidote to their confusion, an eternal perspective through interpretation of scripture and a dwelling place of hope devised from the truth of the cross. And then in a beautiful reversal, after the disciples invite Jesus to stay with them, Jesus offers the disciples hospitality at the table and then they recognize him and poof, Jesus physically disappears. But that was enough. Their recognition of the living Christ points them to a dwelling place of Easter hope and a new destination back to Jerusalem, away from the powers that be, to the power of God. A few weeks ago, I preached about hollow hope versus solid, sustaining Easter hope via, via using chocolate bunnies. <laughs> we all remember that, okay. <laughs> And what the Emmaus story provides for us is the blueprint for living into that solid Easter hope, into those solid Easter bunny ears, and to obtain the ongoing sustenance we need to continue to dwell there because one cannot live on chocolate bunny ears alone. Am I right? And so, <laughs> the Emmaus story points us to liturgy as that blueprint liturgy, which we do here each Sunday and each Wednesday. Because we are all on a journey to Emmaus, and we live in an empire that goes against everything Jesus emulated and taught. And we see its effects that offer destruction all around us. Yet we still show up. We gather together weekly as, community, as a community of faith, bringing our experiences, bringing our brokenness, bringing the brokenness of our world. We come together to listen to the scriptures, maybe hear them with new ears, maybe encounter a God different from the one we are most comfortable with. We may recognize where Jesus has come near to us this week, and then experience that nearness even more fully at the table in the breaking of the bread, in the remembering of the life and death of Jesus in our Eucharistic prayer, calling upon the Holy Spirit to bring the presence of the risen Christ to the gifts that we lay out on the table. And these gifts are not just some wafers and wine and some financial contributions. No, because at the offertory, which happens right before the Eucharistic prayer, we are invited to offer up ourselves and our lives just as we are, to be broken and transformed and filled with the presence of the risen Christ. And in fact, in the Eucharistic prayer from Rite One, which we prayed all through Lent, we prayed to offer up ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, so that Jesus may dwell in us and we in him. So that Jesus may dwell in us and we in him. This dwelling allows us to continue on to our destination or perhaps to a new one, but certainly back out into the world as we dwell with solid Easter hope, new life, and a relationship with the risen Christ, and away from the destinations leading to hollow hope, cheap grace, and a dominion of death. This is how we practice being an Easter people. This is why it's so important that you're here today. It's so important that we come to church each week so that we can dwell with Jesus and he can dwell within us. And then we can walk back out into the world together to bring the same sustaining hope and sustenance to others. Emmaus reminds us that Jesus comes near and will always come near to us, no matter where we might be dwelling or what road we might be on. 
Episcopal priest and writer Barbara Brown Taylor reminds us that Jesus comes to the disappointed, the doubtful, the disconsolate. He comes to those who do not know their Bibles, who do not recognize him even when they are walking beside him. He comes to those who have given up and are headed back home. He comes to all of us just as we are. And I can tell you that he is here with us right now, whether we recognize him or not, whether we want to give up and go back home, he is here. Wherever we find ourselves on the road today, wherever we may be dwelling, whatever our destination is yet to be, let us pray for the courage to have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to know and experience the presence of our risen Christ as he accompanies us in our gathering community today and at the table in the breaking of the bread. Amen. <laughs>